to see you there. You know, I bet you didn't know this, but the Middle East not only makes delicious falafel, but also delicious hostage crises. One of the best was in 1979, when over 50 American embassy workers were taken hostage for over 400 days. And, you know, that kind of sucks, but you gotta think, how did we get here? What does it all mean? What is our point in life? Well, take a seat, grab your favorite falafel, and I'll tell you about it. The Iranian hostage crisis is a very important event in both American and Iranian history. But to fully understand it, we must go back to the early 1900s. In 1901, a British man by the name of William Knox Darcy showed interest in Persian oil. He was allowed a 60-year permit to search for oil, and six years after that, he sold his stake in the country to the British company Burma Oil. In 1908, the Burma company struck oil, and soon after, the British government bought them out. After World War I, the British government instigated a coup bringing Reza Shah Pahlava into power in order to protect the oil interests in what would soon become Iran. It was around the turn of the 20th century when Western countries started to want a piece of the Iranian pie, if you will, when it came to their oil. After World War II, the Iranian people elected a new prime minister, Mohammad Mosadi who supported the nationalization of Iranian oil. This created a lot of problems for the US, Britain, and the USSR, who then overthrew the Prime Minister and implemented the ex-Shah's son, Muhammad Reza Pahlavi, into power. The Shah was in power for many years, until the late 70s when the Iranian Revolution began. Many fundamental Islamists in the country thought the Shah was trying to westernize Iran. This, along with many other things, eventually led to the revolution. After several years of the Shah being in power, many of the people of Iran started to oppose him for his uh, secularization and westernization of the country, and they started to resent his leadership. It's really quite a shame, if you ask me. I had the pleasure of knowing the Shah. I played polo with him at the Oxford Conference of 62. His technique was uncanny. This state of chaos and unlawfulness set the stage for the taking of the hostages at the U.S. Embassy in 1979. Fundamentalism took hold with a fury and a force that helped ignite the still impoverished masses in Iran, who felt they had little reason to be grateful to the Shah. Fabulous profits from oil had not filtered down to them. On November 4th, 1979, a group of students from the local university in Tehran decided to stage a non-violent protest at the U.S. Embassy. The students broke open the gate and rushed inside, but were soon joined by anti-American protesters from a nearby protest. These new protesters quickly overran the students and took over the American embassy, taking all the employees as hostages. It was in the heart of this revolution that our little situation arose. Anti-American sentiments were on the rise, and there was a surge of fundamental Islamic values. Our little friends in the embassy had as little chance as Yale did at the uh, 94 regatta. Most people thought that the hostage situation in Iran would end quickly, but a big religious leader in the area, Grand Ayatollah Khomeini, gave his approval for the taking of the hostages, which allowed the situation to go on for much longer than previously anticipated. During all this, the Shah was exiled from Iran and he fled to the United States where he received treatment for his cancer. This angered many Iranians who believed that the Shah should be put to death for his poor leadership of Iran over the past many years. The Iranians who took the hostages had three demands from the United States before they would release them. 
1. For the United States to return the Shah to Iran for an execution. 2. For the United States to unfreeze Iranian funds being held there and return them to Iran. And 3. For the United States to give a formal apology to Iran for all past meddling with Iranian affairs. After many months of failed negotiations between the hostage takers and President Carter, the president decided to attempt a rescue of the hostages by helicopter. The event failed dramatically. The helicopter blew up, killing several American Marines and one innocent Iranian in the process. This failed attempt was very detrimental to the United States and especially Carter's presidency. This is the core of the tragedy. First impressions might suggest that this is simply the wreckage of the giant C-130 transport plane. But this is the entire rotor assembly of one of the American helicopters that were involved in the rescue attempt. It was parked over here, and it was when it took off on a mistaken bearing that it sliced into the Hercules plane. Many people believe this failed rescue attempt was so detrimental to Carter's presidency that it cost him the election to the Republican candidate Ronald Reagan in 1980. Eventually, after the Shah's death, on January 20th, 1981, the day Ronald Reagan was sworn into his presidency, the hostages were released after their 444th day of incarceration. This event heavily strained relations between the United States and Iran. There was a huge increase in anti-Iranian sentiment in the United States and anti-American sentiment in Iran. The hostage situation also allowed the revolution to grow and let people like Ayatollah Khomeini gain power in Iran and turn into a religious theocracy. After the hostage crisis, things were, as the commoners would say, bad between Iran and the United States. Tensions between the two were higher than between me and my ex-wife, except Iran never tried to set my car on fire. Another major outcome of the Iranian hostage crisis was that the United States decided to support Iraq in the future Iran-Iraq war. This was a huge blow to Iran. Oh, you again. I hope you enjoy a little uh, travel through time there. Maybe you learned something. Maybe you didn't. I know I didn't. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed our little bite of Middle Eastern history. See you around.